Tonight, the Detroit Pistons took on the Phoenix Suns and they fall short 105 to 97. This game tonight was played at the Breslin Center in East Lansing, Michigan, which is home of the Michigan State Spartans. So game recap and initial thoughts. Let's get to it. First things first, Tobias Harris did not play for the second straight game due to illness. I'm really hoping we get a chance to see him in the next couple of days so we can get an idea of just how this team is gonna look opening night and also so that they can get more reps in. The Phoenix Suns, man, they're gonna be a great offensive team. Their big three of KD, Book, and Bradley Beal, they've had an off season to get those reps in and it's showed early. The ball wasn't sticking like it was much of last season and they're moving the ball well for most of the game. Moving on to our Pistons, right? As I mentioned in the last video, there's three bullet points that I'm focused on throughout this preseason. Number one, defensive intensity and effort. Number two, spacing. And number three, ball movement. So last game, all three got checked off. But what about tonight? So number one, the defensive intensity looked to be there in the first half. And before I go any further, let me just say that this was a tale of two halves. The Suns are a high scoring team, so you gotta be locked in for as close as possible to 48 minutes, if you're gonna try to contain them. The Pistons did not do that tonight. They kinda let go of the rope defensively in the second half, and it really showed when the Suns went on that 18-0 run to basically end the game. We're two preseason games in, so I'm not overly concerned yet, especially since all the main guys didn't play much in the second half, but the defensive consistency is something that I'm gonna keep my eye on with this young team. Number two, spacing. It is refreshing to see the defense not converging in on Kate or Jaden every time down the floor. And Kate and especially Jaden now have much clearer driving lanes to get to the rim to make plays, which opens up the offense for everybody else. And number three, the ball movement. Now it was there tonight, once again, in the first half. The early returns are showing though that this team does enjoy making plays for each other. The ball was hopping tonight in the first half and the guys were really making the extra pass and it resulted in a lot of open threes and layups under the rim. It is very, very clear that ball movement and unselfish play are our focus for this team this season. There was a play in the second half where the ball was just hopping, right? And it ended up with three or four driving kicks, which led to an open corner three. And before the shot even went up, you saw guys on, on the bench going like this, just clapping before the shot even went in because the mindset and emphasis on moving the ball was on full display. And some of those threes will go in and some won't. You can't control that. But what you can control is how focused you are as a team of playing unselfish ball and finding the open guy. It was cool to see that. And week over week, month over month, the ball movement is going to continue to get better because these guys are willing passers. So as they become more comfortable with this offense and each other, it'll get better and better. Okay, so let's get to a few Pistons players from tonight's game. Let's start with Kay Cunningham. Kay finished with only three points. But he did have eight assists and two rebounds and a block. And he didn't shoot well tonight. He shot one for six in 18 minutes played. So Kate obviously didn't have a go on tonight offensively. It wasn't his night. But what makes him such a good player is his ability to affect the game in other ways when he's not having a huge offensive night. He had eight assists in the first half alone. And he was orchestrating the offense pretty well. Aside from a few passes here and there, he tried to force the issue on. He did catch his first body of the season though. And the recipient was Mason Plumley. And of course, Jalen Duran has to get in, being Jalen Duran, and he points at Mason Plumley. About a minute or so later, though, Kay followed that up with a block on Devin Booker's fadeaway jumper, which led to a runout layup for Jaden Ivey. So Kay was doing a little bit of everything tonight. And the first thing my mind went to was JB Biggerstaff's statement during his first presser. He said he wants to turn Kate into a two way player. And you can see that's a point of emphasis, and he's bought all the way into it. I really think we're going to see a lot of defensive plays from K this season, and having multiple ball handlers on this team is also going to allow him to do that because he won't have to always exert so much energy on the offensive side of the ball. But I did notice something else too though. A lot of the time, the guy that comes up with the rebound is often allowed to look to push the ball up court, whether it's Fontecchio, Jalen Duran, Ron Holland, etc. All guys who aren't guards have all been allowed to push the ball. And it might not seem like much, but over the course of a game, those possessions can conserve physical and mental energy for guys like Cade and J.I. And this makes sense because J.B. Biggerstaff did mention that multiple guys are going to have some ball handling responsibilities this year. Okay, Jaden Ivey. Jaden finished with 16 points, 5 assists, 4 rebounds, and a steal in 23 minutes. And once again, guys, Jaden Ivey looked great tonight. I said it last game, I'm gonna say it again. He's got a real shot to win most improved player this year. He's obviously worked on his game this offseason, but the majority of the change to me between this season and last season is that the handcuffs have just been taken off. This is the first time we've seen J.I. being allowed to play to his strengths while on the court with Cade. His rookie season, Cade went down for the season in just the first couple weeks. And though he did play alongside Cade last year, he just wasn't allowed to play his game under Monty Williams. 
Coach Bickerstaff is putting all of these guys in the best position to be successful. I believe we're going to see the best version by far of Jaden that we've seen in his young career. He still gets ahead of himself sometimes, right? Trying to make things happen, but you can just see the growth in his pace and decision making. There was a play where Jaden grabbed the defensive rebound and two and a half seconds later, Jalen Durham was thrown down an oop from Jaden. His speed is just unreal and his ability to create easy plays for himself and others is going to be very, very important this year. Jalen Durham. So Jalen Duran finished with 17 points, five rebounds, and one assist in 23 minutes. He did struggle a little bit early in the first half, but he looked much better in the second half, crashing the glass and asserting his physical dominance on those boards, getting off piece of rebounds and put back dunks. It looked like he was trying to do a little bit too much at times, but I believe his focus this season is gonna be and should be becoming an improved rim protector and getting his own offense off of offensive rebounds and of course, the pick and roll action with Cade and Jaden, which we saw again tonight. He also shot five of six from the free throw line. So his improved free throw shooting is still in full effect. And I expect him to be an 80 plus percent free throw shooter this year, which is gonna be important because he's gonna find himself at that free throw line a lot this year and beyond. Shout out to Isaiah Stewart, man. He didn't have a monster stat line and he didn't have to. And that's the point. Last season, he worked his tail off on that three point shot, right? And he stepped in admirably at the four, but it's clear that he's best at the five. And him being at the back of five for this team makes him much more effective with his effort and physicality. He protected the rim very well tonight too, and he had a lot of offensive tap outs to give the Pistons extra possessions. And he just looks really comfortable now that he's playing to his strengths. Tim Hardaway Jr. struggled again with this shot tonight. This is the second straight game that he hasn't shot it well. And for a team that can't afford to have streaky shooters, I'm honestly not sure how much he's going to be in the rotation this season. I think guys like Malik Beasley may end up soaking up the remaining minutes at that guard spot. And that's a wrap for tonight. The Pistons lose to the Phoenix Suns 105-97 and move to 1-1 one one on the preseason. They run it back against the Suns in Phoenix on Friday, October 11th. I'll see you all right back here post game. Appreciate y'all tapping in. And until next time, Detroit vs. Everybody. Peace. Breaking records set by Michael J. Bringing glory days back to the future, Michael J. He's way ahead of his time, he's got a plan, yeah. Fed off by none other than his brother Cannon. If this is more than a game, it's a passion. Why they see we working? Cause I'm a action. Jay, then I'll be on the way and get that put a ride. Electric flying through the air, a Detroit shot. And it doesn't really matter if you love him, like him, hate him. That boy is boy, he's a